Okay, we're counting down. Five, four, three, two, one. Hi, everyone. We're live. We're live. <laughs> Good to see you all. Yeah, welcome again. This is our fourth stream we're calling Live Stream. So I get this call from London one evening. Very mysterious call. And the lady at the other end of the phone says, are you Corky Siegel? And I said, yes. And she says, do you have a sister named Joy? And I said, yes. And she says, did you live at 8,000 South Euclid? In Chicago? In Chicago, yeah. And I said, yes. (laughs) And then she says, well, I have something that is past from the 40s. Hand in hand and hand in hand. I'm in London now. I have this. She lives in London. Yeah, lives in London. I'm coming to San Francisco, and I'm going to make a stop in Chicago. And I believe I have something that was yours when you were a little baby. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to show you guys what it is. It was quite a mystery. Winnie the Pooh books from when I was a little baby. And this is what happened. So let me see if I could do this without blocking the camera. She saw this, Joy Isla Siegel. She was trying to find out who owned the books. And then here's Joy Isla Siegel, 8,000 South Euclid, Chicago. But then she couldn't track down Joy. It's difficult to read. So if you could see this, yeah, it's very difficult to read, but you could see... In childish scribbling. Yeah, it says... Corky. Corky. (laughs) And she was able to figure that out and get these books to us from when... She went on the internet. I was a little baby. And here she is. With the books. Unbelievable. So I thought this was a nice little um, Winnie the Pooh quote here. Sometimes the smallest things take up the most room in your heart. Winnie the Pooh. So those books just touched our heart completely. And for today, here's another quote from Winnie the Pooh. Home is the comfiest place to be. Winnie the Pooh. So with that, I'm going to hand the, the iPhone over to Holly. A lot of people asked, how are you filming this? What's, what's the camera? You okay, Holly? Mm. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Oh, wait. And uh, so everyone should know it's the iPhone. Is it the 10 or the 11? I don't know. Do you know what it is? It's the 11. Okay, the iPhone 11. Okay. So this song I'm going to play for you guys is called One Boat, No Shore. So I think everyone could agree, especially now, that we're all all in one boat and there's no shore. Certainly now. However, I wrote this song in 2016. Because in 2016, early on in the year, I felt like we're all in one boat, all in the same boat. And there is no sure. So, this is for you. We sail, or we 
<laughs> I better do another one really quick. This one's about reincarnation. Story time. Pure, pure wet. Huh? Oh, my pure wet. Right. <laughs> we're getting dizzy. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so this was in the 1990s. 
uh, when uh, I get a call from Doc Severinsen. So this is about Doc Severinsen. But when I was a little kid of eight years old, so let's see, that was 19, I was born in 43, so that was 1950. I was taking clarinet lessons. And my family used to tell me about this fellow named Bobby Rosengarten. They said, he's a, he's a drummer, he's a musician, just like you're trying to become a musician. And my whole life, I heard about Bobby Rosengarten. And this is, just so you know who he is, this is what I read in, in Wikipedia. Bobby Rosengarten began playing drums when he was 12 and later studied at the University of Michigan. And I tell you that my family talked about Bobby Rosengarten and said he was my cousin. I don't know if I said that. <laughs> so he began playing drums at 12 and later studied at the University of Michigan. After playing drums in, in army bands in World War II, he moved to New York City working in several groups between 1945 and 1948 before coming a busy studio musician. He played at NBC and ABC from 1949 to 1974. He was on the Steve Allen Show, the Ernie Kovacs Show, Sing Along with Mitch, Johnny Carson's Tonight Show Band, and he led the band for the Dick Cavett Show. It was the Bobby Rosengarten Orchestra. Through the years, Rosengarten was an active studio musician, recording with Duke Ellington, Billy Holiday, Quincy Jones, Peter Nero, Gil Evans, Miles Davis, Jerry Mulligan, Benny Goodman, Moondog, Dick Hyman, Arlo Guthrie, Carmen McRae, Benny King, Harry Balfani, Barbara Streisand, Tony Bennett, and Jimi Hendrix. So, again, all my life I'm hearing about it. Never had any communication with him never attempted to c communicate with him. Then one time I get this phone call from uh, the management of Doc Severinsen that wanted me to do William Russo's Three Pieces for Blues Band and Symphony Orchestra while he conducted various symphony orchestras. Maybe the first one was, was in Phoenix. And again, this was already, you know, 19... 92 or 3 or 4. And uh, I was really excited in meeting Doc, especially because I was going to ask him about my cousin, Bobby Rosengarten, who I never heard from, I never talked to him, knew nothing about him other than seeing him on TV a couple times and saying that he was my cousin. And I'm really excited about meeting Doc also. And so there we are backstage, and there's this long haul. And I'm at one end of the stage, and there appears Doc Severson. And as soon as he sees me, he says, are you Corky? And I went, yes. And he says, your cousin Bobby says hello. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. So Doc later, um, he told me that uh, the reason he wanted to do this performance with me is because after the Johnny Carson show, he would come home to his nice home. He'd light a fire in the fireplace. And then, for relaxation, he would put on a record. And he said, most of the time, it was my record with William Russo and the San Francisco Symphony. And he said, sometimes he'd pull out the trumpet and play along with it. And that's why he wanted to do these symphonic tours with me. And speaking of meeting people backstage in a long, the long hall behind the stage. I got to open for Phoebe Snow. And again, I was really excited about meeting Phoebe Snow. I mean, I just loved her so much. And there she is appearing at the other end of the hall. And I see her and I'm really excited about meeting her, but before I could say anything, she says, are you Corky? <clears throat> and I says, yes. And she starts running up to me and she gives me this big, hug and she says you're one of my main influences and she started singing king b in my ear <laughs> huh sing it the way she said it i'm a king b <laughs> as in round your high. okay well so let me go back and see what's going on uh, eddie clearwater he wants to know memories about uh his cousin eddie clearwater you loved it. Yeah, you I loved, loved uh, in fact, Eddie. 
Eddie used to play, when, the first time I played with Eddie, um, it was just him and I. We were playing for lawyers for the creative arts. And I asked him to send me some music. And he sent me this one basic blue shuffle. And I listened to it. And it changed my life. Because the rhythm he played was not quite like anything I heard. Though, it was certainly based on Chicago blues. You know, instead of dun, da dun, da dun, da dun. It was dun, da dun, da dun, da dun. A little of that in there, a little of that snap in there. And he's been like a major, major influence on me. I love Eddie so much. Love him so much. We miss him a lot. Yeah, and cool picture. Yeah, Mary, no kidding. Love to Renee. Yeah, with Wolf. Oh, you got to open for you in Green Bay, Wisconsin, years ago. That's Gregory Allen. Invited me up to sit in. Oh, great. Thanks so much. You know, it's funny, speaking of inviting people to sit in, I'm playing at the Quiet Night with Siegel Schwal, and there was this kid in the audience. The kid took out his guitar and started playing along. And I stopped the band. And I said, hey, kid, you have your nerve playing the guitar in the audience while we're up on here on stage. I said, you should get up here and play with us. <laughs> It ended up being Steve Goodman. <laughs> and next, the following week, he brought John Prime, and they both came and sat in. So Eddie Holstein is out there. You might want to tell your story about uh, Eddie and Joni Mitchell, and that oh. is a great story. So it's, it's Eddie. Say hello to Eddie, Eddie everyone. So uh, Joni Mitchell asked Siegel Schwal to do uh, a demo tape for her, which is actually how she got her record deal. And, uh, and, and she talks about us on her website. Not she, but on her, her website. Company, we talk yeah. about Siegel Schwal and this project. Anyway, she came to pick up the tape one time while I was on the road. And uh, she rang the bell, and Eddie went downstairs. Eddie and I were roommates. And he went downstairs, and he said, Yeah, what do you want? He <laughs> says, well, I came to pick up the tape. And he said, okay, and he goes and gets the tape, and he sticks it out the door, hands it to her, and slams the door. <laughs> and later we went, oh, my God, that was Joni Mitchell. <laughs> so let's see, let's see what people are saying. And um, uh, when Judy Collins introduced you to Crowded Newport, wow, I don't remember that. That is amazing. This is Sam Bosky. Saw, uh, he said he saw us first when Judy Collins introduced Siegel Schwal to the crowd at Newport and then he also saw us at the Club 47 and then in the new Penelope in Montreal. Sam, you must be very, very, very old. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Judy was always so nice to me. I don't remember her introducing us, but that, that is a great honor. And so I'll just play something else. I'll lead, I'll lead this out. So, So I'm going to say goodbye with something. Oh, I know. A little bit of missing persons. Okay. I know Gary Sherman's out there. Gary Sherman did ABC's Missing Persons for television. And um, I wrote this piece for Chamber Blues. And we called it Missing Persons. I'm just going to play a little of that. Tell here. how you met uh, Gary and Joe and Sunny. How I met Gary and Joe? Uh -huh. Okay. So actually, Gary, Gary Sherman tells me we met in the 60s, and I have no recollection of that. But when I remember meeting is when I got a call from Gary Sherman and uh, Academy Award winning uh, musician Joe Renzetti. And they called me. And they said they wanted me to be in a movie with Orson Welles. And I was going to play Orson Welles' sidekick. And I, it's sort of a long story. But, but so, so what happened is Orson Welles end up, die, end up dying, so I never got to do this. And Joe Renzetti and Gary would keep calling and saying, don't worry, we're going to do another project. And eventually we did a project called Wanted, Dead, or Alive, starring Rutger Hauer. And, uh, Who passed away very recently. Oh, he did? Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so 
the studio wasn't in LA, the studio was at Joe Renzetti's home in Upper Black Eddy, Pennsylvania, in a little log cabin. And all the music for the movie was down there, so I got to hang a couple of weeks with Gary and Joe. And if we weren't close in the 60s, we certainly did become close at that time. And that's how Gary and I met, and we've done a lot of things together since then. He lives in Evanston, he's this famous filmmaker who did The Last Poltergeist, and did all these great horror films that he's very, very famous for. And he also did, what else? Deathline. Yeah, he did Deathline, and he did uh, Barry Den... Uh, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, buried, uh, buried Alive, I think it is. I'll think of it. But anyway, so a lot of really great movies. So I'm going to play this for Gary, and, we could, and we'll say goodbye with this. But when you say goodbye, we have... A goodbye message somewhere. I just want to make sure I have this. Oh yeah, it's over there. Okay, so make sure you end on that, Holly. And you okay. Got this okay. <laughs> sign up for the newsletter and that's how you'll be able to find out when these live streams are happening and when I have new recordings out and when if there's ever live performances ever again you'll be able to find <laughs> out by going to the newsletter sign up for the newsletter at uh, chamberblues.com hi Judy Music. hi Judy Garcia hi Judy Garcia <laughs> <laughs> come back to Chicago kid so chamberblues.com corkymusic.com subscribe sign up it's under context if you can't find it. And I'll say goodbye now. Show the goodbye. separation <laughs>